Hello guys, in this video we'll be speaking about how to interface your Arduino with the database. Interfacing is what I mean is uh, the data sent serially from the Arduino is to be written into the database. If you are facing the same issue, if you want to know how that is done, then watch this video till the end. So uh, before getting, start, like getting started, we would like to uh, bring to your notice that we are using two standard Java APIs over here, one called the JDB0 set and the other one is jserial.com so now let us understand what is jserial.com jserial.com is a java library designed to provide a platform independent way to access standard serial ports without requiring external libraries native code or any other tools it is meant as an alternative to rx tx and the java communications api with increased ease of use and an enhanced support for timeouts and the ability to open multiple ports simultaneously is given for jserial.com we'll be using that in our project to read the database uh, to read the values that are given from the arduino and we'll be giving it to jdbc row set so now let's get started with that so now first we'll uh, take a look onto the my database class my database class is written by using standard api called jdbc row set JDBC row set, the procedure in establishing connection to the JDBC row set is as follows. The, the established connection function of this class is served, uh, serves the purpose of establishing the connection with our project to the database in case of ours that is a parking database. So now let us take line by line execution uh, into consideration and understand this one. Now class dot for name is a function that loads the JDBC driver onto the RAM. Now, let us create an instance of JDBC row set. JDBC row set that, uh, that can be created by using a row set provider dot new factory dot create JDBC row set. Once you have created the instance of the row JDBC row set, you have to set URL. Set URL in the sense you have to specify the path of your database. In our case, it is hosted locally. So that's why it is given as JDBC colon MySQL colon double slash localhost at port 3306 and the name of the database is parking system. So in case if your database is hosted online, you can uh, refer to the documentation of the look, uh, host where the database has been hosted and you can set the URL as mentioned in the documentation. Now next you have to set the URL that is JDBC colon MySQL in case if you are hosting it local ho uh, in local you have to follow this step JDBC set URL takes a string which is a path to the database it can be given as JDBC colon MySQL slash slash localhost it is hosted on port number 3306 and the name of the database is parking underscore system now you have to set username and password by default the username would be root and by default there wouldn't be any password to your database if you want the if you want to set the password to the database then you can set and if you are setting the password then you have to use roset dot set password and you have to specify the password in the form of string now next you have to set the command command for which the current roset has to be executed as we all know that in case of PLSQL, you have a concept called as cursors, where you have to set a query to the cursor, saying cursor, some cursor name, is you specify the query to, uh, to which that particular cursor has to be executed. But in this case, a standard function called uh, object of row set dot set command, where you have to set the command. In our case, I would be setting it as select everything, select all attributes, that is select star from parking lots is a command which I'll be setting. So we have a table called parking lots under the database parking system. So once I set this command, you have to execute. Once you execute this command, the same thing what happens in case of cursors, that is the records on from the secondary storage device are loaded onto main memory and the variable or the reference called row set is assigned to that particular uh, result i mean query of the result so i have to put this under try catch block in case of any sql exceptions like if you have done any mistakes in setting the query 
or if the path of that particular local host is not found or if the database is not found or if server is off if any exception occur you can catch the exception and print the exception this is the standard constructor so once is the the object of this class is created established connection is called in order to establish the connection load the driver set the url then make the connection and set the query and execute so uh, this is done and once this is done your database your row set is ready for uh, for using whether you want to update it or uh, you can uh, retrieve the contents or delete or update or modify now next function we have in the in the class my database is update count in case of our project we have uh, we have to read the values from the com port or the usb to be more specific and write them onto the database of the particular parking lot so that that uh, module that function is taken care by method update count which takes value from the main function value is nothing but the value read from the com port that is a count of particular spaces available in the parking lot again we would be writing it in try catch block block now next uh, there is a standard function to update any attributes attribute value onto that row set which is then uh, updated onto the main database we have row set dot update int for updating a integer value onto the database column so we have to specify the attribute the column name and pass the value in uh, in our case let us refer to the database on referring to the database the seventh column is the available spaces so you are updating seventh column with the new value passed on to the passed from the com port which is again passed from the arduino that is updated to the database so the updated value would come here in the column available spaces so that's how it is written then row set dot update row yeah this is very important uh, row set is actually a reference to the data set which is present in ram but you have to update that particular uh, updation or the dirty uh, dirty column which is updated you have to update it back onto the hard disk so the function used for that is row set dot update row is a function which updates that row set changed onto ram onto the secondary storage device and again if exception occurs then you can say you can print the stack trace and you can say return false that is count is not successful if count is successful then you can say return true now the next connection of my database class is close connection this this is connection this particular function is used to close the connection once the database transaction is completed again try and catch same thing repeats now next function is search lot this function i have written so that if multiple uh, data is sent from to uh, if multiple data is sent to the com port from different data from different parking lots then you have to check from which the data was sent and update to that particular lot saying that that particular lots value available spaces has been changed so let us take a flag variable initialize it as false now row set dot before first this function is used to bring the pointer to the first row row which is returned from the query so once you bring that to before the that to the first then you can say system dot uh, this is for this is for verification purpose next row set dot next is used to bring the cursor or the pointer to the next record then you can say row set dot next returns true if it has successfully uh, the pointer is successfully updated to the new position it returns false if it doesn't so uh, this loop executes till the uh, number of uh, till uh, uh, total number of if say n records or n parking lots exist in the system this loop repeats for n times and once uh, it it uh, goes to the eighth record it says null and uh, row set dot next returns returns false and this loop terminates then if row set dot get int of 2 this function returns the second value that is lot number each each parking lot is identified by its lot number so the data which has entered onto the com port will will, will have a count as well as lot number so by uh, examining that packet you can understand 
uh, for which the particular packet is for. So you have to search that particular lot onto this column. And once you get that, you have to if that is equal to uh, if that is equal to lot number, you can say you have found that. And uh, say you have uh, and you have to say that print and uh, you have to say it is found. Then again, you have to catch the exception. If, and if it does, if it is not found, you have to return the fly. That's all about my database class. Now next we'll have a look at Arduino class. Before we start with the Arduino one class, let us have have a look at the JDBC Rosette class. JDBC Rosette is actually an extension of Result Set Data, uh, Result Set API, which was uh, developed by uh, Oracle. Uh, this uh, API makes use of some features of the Result Set along with some additional features. So. Uh, class uh, this class is uh, basically used to establish the connection with database and parking lot in our case used as standard uh, import JCB, JDBC row set so you can find docu more documentation at this link over here uh, it says a wrapper around a result set object that makes it possible to use the result set as Java beans component thus a JDBC row set object can be one of the beans that the tool makes available for composing an application. Because the JDBC row set is a connected row set, that is, it continually it continually maintains its connection to the database using a JDBC technology enabled driver. In it 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 also effectively makes a driver a Java beans component. Because it is always connected to its database, an instance of JDBC row set can simply take calls invoked on it and in turn call them on its result set object. As a consequence, a result set can, for example, be a component in a Swing application. Another advantage of JDBC row set object is that it can be used to make a set of result, that is result set objects scrollable and updatable. All row set objects are by default scrollable and updatable. If the driver and database being used do not support scrolling and or updating of result sets. An application can populate a JDBC row set object with data of a result set object and then operate on the JDBC row set object as if it were the result object. So this was a documentation given by Oracle. If you can remember in the old times, establishing connection with database was very tough. You have to use a concept called JDBC ODBC bridge where you have to write like uh, make a strings of pre prepared prepared statements class. You have to create an object of prepared statement class. Then uh, you have to initialize it with a SQL query. Then insert that query by calling some standard function onto that prepared statement. Then you have to pass that prepared statements onto the old uh, traditional way of uh, class that was result set where you have to pass it, get it executed, and if you have to uh, update to the database again you have to create a query you have to create an object of uh, prepared statement uh, embed a query sql query in the form of string to that particular object then you have to pass it on to the uh, result set again and get it executed in the background so after creating this jdbc row set uh, a tough technology called jdbc uh, odbc jdbc bridge which was in existence uh, came to an end so this was about JDBC row set. Now let us continue our discussion with the class Arduino 1. So Arduino 1 class is written. It's a main class actually which has been written to continuously monitor the data that is coming onto the USB input ports and then update it onto the database by using the object of my database class which we have just seen. So the first and foremost thing would be create a class then in main function we have to create an object of my database which we, we have been speaking till now we have to create an object of my database then you have to open the serial ports before reading the values onto the uh, before bringing them onto the console you have to open the serial ports get the com ports which which are active currently you have to connect your arduino board onto the usb port and thereby establish connection between your computer and uh, arduino board so have to create an array of serial ports which is uh, available in uh, uh, java x uh, file so have to create it 
then uh, there is a function called serial port dot get com get com ports. It is a static function which returns an array of serial ports which are currently active. Then we have to select a port. Suppose if say many n number of ports which are active currently on this device, then you have to select a port. Then once once you select the port, then uh, you have to return that value and open that port. You have to say serial port, you have to assign a variable serial port to that particular array element. So we are doing that in this particular statement. In this particular statement, for every port, we are asking the user which port to open. Say if suppose n number of ports are USB ports are connected to the system, you have to select one among them where exactly your Arduino is connected. Then in this for loop, we are asking user, we are, we are negotiating through each port and we are getting the status of that particular port, then you have to ask the user which port he, he, he or she wants to select. Then once you ask the user, uh, he'll return, uh, that this particular function will return an index to that port. Now you have to uh, open that serial port, that is that uh, chosen port would be present in an array, which is assigned to this variable serial port. Now you have to open the serial port by using uh, reference.openPort function, if the port is opened successfully, then uh, it says port opened successfully, else if some error occurs or some exception occurs, then it says unable to port, unable to open the port. Next, this function here set com port timeouts is used to set the timeout, timeout uh, credentials. Like if at what time, uh, like what is the baud rate and other things like that come into picture during the serial communications. Yeah. Now you have to create an object of scanner and uh, embed that scanner, assign that scanner to serial port. That is uh, created by using scanner, uh, scanner object equal to new scanner. You have to attach that scanner to the uh, serial port. That can be done by using scanner and for that constructor you have to pass serial port dot get input stream. Now these are the two variables uh, which in which onto which the actual data from the COM port is read. Now this, since data is of type, uh, since data is of uh, type scanner and which is attached to the ports, you have to say while data has, data dot has next line. That is this function returns true if any value is read, on, read from the COM port. If that is the case, you have to convert that value on, uh, into the, into integer. Since the red value is in the form of binary, you have to convert that into the integer. Now while, uh, since the Arduino will be co so continuously sending the data, if it has sent any new data, for that condition you have to check this one. If the previous value is not equal to new value, then you have to update it. Before updating, you have to check whether uh, for which that particular uh, information or the parking value belongs to. That is done using function search lot. There you are searching the, that particular lot and updating that particular value onto that particular uh, parking lot. Then you have to say db dot update count, database object dot update count and pass that value. That value is passed on to update count function which we have written here and that value is read and written onto the database as explained previously. That value would appear here in the available spaces currently. Now we have to continue this process till, till uh, Arduino stops sending the values. For our confirmation, we have written the print else, print else statement saying the, that particular database item has been successfully updated. And we have to continue this process and this while, while loop repeats continuously, infinitely reading the values of the database, reading the values uh, from the Arduino and updating that into database. This is all about Arduino 1.0.